in the upcoming 15 minutes, we are going to have a look at cell frame. We will evaluate the team behind the project. We are going to have a look at the white paper. We will talk about tokenomics and the token cell. We will talk about the community and my interactions with it. I will conclude the review at the very end. The purpose of my reviews is not only to extend our understanding of the technologies behind some smaller crypto projects, but also to find the next Ethereum, the next platform that is going to achieve the mass scale adoption. So stay with me and let's have a look if Cellframe has any shot. What is a Cellframe network? It's a third generation layer one blockchain addressing quantum resistance problem even before it becomes a problem. It's written in C language using post quantum cryptography and has layer zero capabilities thanks to its cell chains. The network focuses on replacing cloud services with fog ones. Fog services are distributed and decentralized that anyone can run from their homes. That was a quick summary of what the project is and the next section will focus on the development team behind it. We can learn from their website that Cellframe is founded by two Russians, Dmitry Gerasimov and Mira Brezinskaya. Dmitry started as a developer for a few years but is currently involved with a number of companies and projects. Since 2012, he's a director at IP Krasimov Andreevich, but he's also a founder and a director of Demlabs that he's involved with since 2007. His profile looks like what you'd expect from a serial entrepreneur, but I don't really want to see that. Serial entrepreneurs tend to leave projects halfway. On the contrary, extremely long years Dimitri has been involved with the Demlabs suggest that this guy will stick around until he delivers. Mira has interesting background as a certified life coach that she did for five years. I uh, really should get one of those. Her profile intersects with Dimitri at Demlabs where she still works as chief operations officer. She also is a CEO of CalVPN arguably the first project deployed on Cellframe. As you might have already guessed, majority of the team members are Russians, which makes Cellframe the first Russian crypto project I ever reviewed. And now let's have a close look at the white paper. We human beings generally overestimate the rate of change in the near future, but we underestimate the rate of change in the far future. We can extrapolate this statement and thus we expect quantum computers entering the scene and breaking current security model of the world in the reasonably far future. That means that there's existing methodologies, there's ex existing algorithms that have already been designed so as soon as the hardware becomes operational, that's it. It can implement these things. This is where Cellframe comes to shine, as it's a blockchain platform built with post-quantum security in mind. So what makes Cellframe cryptography unique compared to existing blockchains? So there hasn't been much rollout of post-quantum cryptography as of yet. So for example, like Bitcoin does not provide it and neither does Ethereum. So how do they achieve such superior level of security? Well, let's have a look. It's actually done through variety of features such as multiple encrypting algorithms that it uses or a special support chain that it uses where potentially malicious participants are placed. The special support chain is kind of like a quarantine. Well, there are a couple of names of the algorithm use. So it's New Hope, NTRU, Frodo, Picnic. Picnic is a known post-quantum algorithm and also others. And by the way, there is no third party code in the whole cell frame system. And that also gives less possible points of failure. Just like few other projects I've reviewed, 
Also, cell frame has horizontal scaling, so the more hardware power you add, the more productivity you get. Let's talk about the cell frame structure a little bit. It has two layers. The main layer is heterogeneous and it can launch subchains and tokens. And the second is homogeneous layer where the subchains are organized in cells. It's also where the term cell chains comes from. These cell chains are highly customizable and give the platform layer zero capabilities, which means you can give them any attribute you want, even its own consensus. The blockchain of blockchains, right? They even call these cells syngenic, metaphorically comparing them to body's stem cells, which can convert to any specific cell type in the body. They can be launched with any possible attributes and connected to any other cell or a shard, where their inner communication is direct, means peer-to-peer. And that makes them independent from the system score. So any potentially arbitrary decision zero chain does does not affect the cell chains. As far as the language goes, it's written in pure C, and this is indeed special, as I've never seen any other project written in pure C. It results into more efficient utilization of CPU power and memory. It's the language that kind of rules the computing world without being very well known. Like people don't hear about it, but um, essentially the guts of your computer, the operating system, whether it's Windows, whether it's Mac, Linux, everything is written in C and even devices. У нас все написано на чистом C. Это мы практически, по-моему, единственный блокчейн, который таким образом реализован. И за счет также многоуровневого шардинга у нас очень низкие требования к железу для валидаторов и даже просто для полной ноды. Ее можно запустить там на Raspberry Pi, на смартфоне старом, старом железе, и это, это хорошо. При этом для разработчиков достаточно простой выбран язык Python в стандартном окружении, что снижает порог входа. Таким образом мы как бы готовы предоставить э, платформу для разработчиков, чтобы они могли создавать нескромно конкурентов YouTube, конкурентов э, Facebook, Dropbox, ну и прочим облачным сервисам. From the start, the system will be launched with proof of stake and proof of genesis, which is a modification of proof of authority. Proof of genesis will only equal to 1% of total consensus though. 99% of the consensus is proof of stake. Now the smart contracts. Let's compare them to the smart contracts of current platforms such as Ethereum, Tezos, NEO and others. They can't interact directly with operating systems resources, but smart contracts of cell frame can. Furthermore, the resources utilization is further perfected in various ways, such as the operations are processed on exclusively one and the same CPU. So there is not a power loss when switching. There are few different kinds of nodes, such as a full node, light node, an archive node, master node, root node, and even others and they are organized using whitelist system, which is a list of nodes with an uplink for each of them, copied from one node to another. As a result, nodes will be built into a hierarchical scheme, representing roughly the hierarchy of the internet. The white paper also mentions the native token cells, so let's dive into them in a standalone chapter. Cell token is used for value transfer, staking and cell chains auctions and leasing. The circulating supply is 28.7 million with a total possible supply of 30.3 million. Today the token is worth over 18 cents with a total market cap of only 5 million. The native mainnet is not yet live and so the token only exists on Ethereum and Binance Smart Chain. You can grab it on multiple centralized and decentralized exchanges such as Uniswap and Gate.io. By the way, did you know that Gate is one of the few sexes 
that provided fully audited proof of reserves recently? Well, I did know that. Anyway, I mentioned auctions and leasing. So what are those? The white paper doesn't mention auctions and leasing at all, nor the website offers significant information. The best thing will be to let other talented YouTube content creator called Crypto with Rico explain those auctions to you. The cell frame wallet can have different addresses on different blockchains. With this wallet, you can transact directly on any network. Service nodes on the cell frame core network which communicate with each other do the work of swapping your transaction in the backend. For example, you can transfer or trade tokens from Ethereum to Polygon or BSC with no problem as long as it's compatible. For a cell chain to be added to the cell frame, it must have its own cell chain slot. They're very scarce and limited to 50 cell frame cell chain slots, which is inspired by Polkadot. A cell frame also recognizes multiple cell frame cell chain types and each of them has a different purpose. So we've got system level cell chains, we've got auction granted cell chains, and we've got community cell chains. And worth mentioning is that at the end of an auction, the smart contract is issued with an NFT token. This token can be sold on the market or used for its intended purpose. And when used for its intended purpose, it will be transferred to a special smart contract from where it can be picked up on request within a week. And the slots are being leased for a period of three years and each project can take up to two slots maximum. And when the lease contract ends, the cell chain participates in an auction again. The roadmap is regularly updated on the website and has few exciting milestones ahead, including mainnet, which will first be released as a babynet, but will eventually be relaunched as a release version later. As far as the price action of the token is concerned, we have to look at the CoinGecko's history to realize that the token made its all-time high just after it came on the market back in March 2021, back when the altcoins were in a massive hype and it peaked at around $5. Well, today it's down more than 96%. As for the buy area of the token, we are now making new all-time lows. I am not good at Fibonacci, so I will only focus on the possible sell areas of the token. There are two areas that I can see immediately. First, the higher sell area is going to be around $1.2 and the another one which was almost hit, but not quite, is around 70 cents. These would be two areas for a cell frame network in the future which might be hit if the development continues and the usage of the token increases and there is a significant community. Always remember that the value of these projects always come from the community. And speaking of community, let's have a closer look at it. Of course, Cellframe is on Twitter with 26,000 followers, on YouTube with 1.5 thousand subscribers, of course they are on Medium, and on GitHub they have 18 repositories. Naturally they are on Telegram, but I'm unable to access their group because the first day I got there I tried to copy paste the link to my drafted review and I got banned. And they have their Reddit page where I, as always, posted the draft for my honest review some time ago to discuss it with the community and get the feedback. I have gotten very little feedback though and I was forced to leave it there for one for more than a week due to my health issues. And now let's have a very short critical point. My main critical point is concerned to the governance because there seems to be no governance at all. There is one line in the white paper that says in the future we plan to implement some kind of a governance system for the decentralized system. Well, in the future and we plan to, that doesn't sound very good. And as we all know, the governance is the main issue that everybody is trying to solve and the Bitcoin maxis are laughing that actually nobody is solving it correctly. So let's prove them wrong. And my second point comes down to the community itself. 
my own uh, interaction with the community proves that the community is extremely small and very little active. There is one very active guy called Nikinungas, but other than him, I didn't see any other active community, hardcore community members that would walk around and spread the good word and educate and help and inquire. And as we all know, the value of the token actually comes from the community. If there is no community, there is no going to be value of the project expressed. So even though the roadmap is approaching some lucrative parts of the development, such as the first candidate for the mainnet code, and then some time later we have the mainnet relaunch and the release version of the mainnet, but all of this is gonna be is gonna come in vain if there actually is going to be no community that will care. Cellframe brings something on the table and solves a problem even before it becomes a problem, for which they have a thumb up, although the community is just too small, almost non-existent. The team is not groundbreaking either. I'm not convinced that Cellframe is going to play a major part in a crypto world of tomorrow. Well, thank you for watching. This was my honest review of Cellframe. And as it happens to be, I have made quite few of such honest reviews. For instance, the most popular one so far is the review of Alliance Block. Check it out.